Hey friends, Sean from Draft Therapy here, and on today's review for you, ahoy! Mean Mallow Bean is a 14.2% imperial stout aged in oak bourbon barrels with marshmallow and vanilla beans from Drafting Table Brewing Company in Wixom, Michigan. Welcome back everyone to my January Cellar Dive series where I take a look at my aged beer collection to see if they're still good, if they're just meh. Mean Mallow Bean is a bit of a whale beer for me, that's why the old Ahoy thing at the beginning. I've never actually had this or its variants outside of maybe once at a beer fest. It's usually sold out, or by the time I make it to the tap room, they just don't have any left at Drafting Table's tap room. You might be saying to yourself, if you've never had it, how do you have a bottle and, and why do you have it? So I do have to thank my Dewey Pod Monster co-host John Farner for passing this bottle along to me. If you're interested in hearing two nerds talk about crappy movies, give our podcast a listen. I'll leave the link in the description below. You can thank me later. So let's go to the Can Cam to take a look at the label. This week's Can Cam is brought to you by Payless Footwear. Why pay more when you can pay less? Let's take a look at the label here. If we look at the front, we see the Wixom Michigan Drafting Table Brewing Company familiar logo across the top. It has this silver platinum looking bourbon barrel reflection, reflective uh, barrel here on there. And it says Mean Mallow Bean. It has three toasted marshmallows. It looks on like it's on top of a barrel lid and the little lines look like they're vanilla beans kind of. Underneath that it says Imperial Stout aged in oak bourbon barrels with marshmallow and vanilla beans. If we turn around to the back, we can see it says brewed and bottled by Drafting Table Brewing Company. Uh, you can find out more about them at draftingtablebeer.com. And it says, this imperial stout was aged for 10 months in bourbon barrels. We then aged marshmallow and vanilla beans to it to create a rich and smooth flavor, making a great beer to sip on next to a roaring campfire. It tells you underneath that it is 14.2% alcohol by volume. This is a 12.7 fluid ounce container. It says to enjoy fresh from a glass, keep cold, do not age. And it shows a little Belgian style snifter and the bitterness scale, which again, I've mentioned every time I review a drafting table beer, I love to see the scale. It shows you a bitterness scale on a range from one to five, five being the, the most bitter. It has two hop cones lit up. If we turn it a little bit around to the side, it says draft on with their address, 49438 Pontiac Trail in Wixom, Michigan, and the government warning. And a little sticker here that lets you know that this was bottled on 6220. So I'm gonna grab my glass here. I've got a Bell's kind of snifter style glass. This has wax on it. As you may know from my last video with wax, this is my arch nemesis, wax on a bottle. Again, emergency room trip averted. No cuts were made to my flesh in the making of this video. Let's go ahead and crack it. I should have enough. There we go, very nice. White wax, very nice. Oh, I can smell the, the vanilla, the marshmallow, the pageantry, the grandeur as I pop the top on that. I don't want any of that in my, in my glass. Wow. This is super sweet smelling. It has a massive amount of vanilla and marshmallow. It smells like, it almost smells so strong vanilla, like a vanilla candle almost, like that in your face. Let's go ahead and pour this. Coming out really dark. It looks thick. It looks heavy on the pour. Actually, in the glass, it has a bit of a transparency to it. How much is even left? You know what? I'm just going to leave it like that. So, <laughs> there's not much head to speak of. Maybe like a, a sliver. As you can see from the overhead, there's like, now there's no head left at all. And we'll put that right there. I'm going to be probably pouring the rest of this little bit. And I'm going to try to do my best to restrain myself and sip it. If we look at the color, super dark. The only thing I can see is I have like a conical shaped head in the reflection of this glass and the lights behind me. And of course, Estelle Getty here. On the nose, the glass, it's not so vanilla explosion airy, explosionary. It doesn't have as much vanilla coming right out of the glass, but there's a lot more of a kind of, definitely a lot, more, a lot more of a bourbon barrel characteristic. It has a little bit more of a molasses aroma. It's not so sweet smelling as it did, as it smelled out of the glass, but let's, let's just drink it. Let's just try it out. I'm going to talk about the mouthfeel first, of course. Oh, 
Okay, it's going to be hard to talk, not talk about the flavor because I wanted to say something, but the mouthfeel has a nice thickness to it. Full-bodied, not thin. It's not like some recent bourbon barrel-aged stouts where they just feel super watered down, super thin. This has a really nice, heavy thickness to it. Again, not syrupy, but like borderline. It almost has like a maple syrup, like a light maple syrup kind of uh, mouthfeel texture to it. Let's talk about the flavor. A lot of sweetness on the upfront. A lot of vanilla, a lot of marshmallow. You really get all that sweetness. It's very delicious, let's put it that way. But you get a lot of the vanilla, you gotta, you gotta get a lit, get a lot, I'm tongue tied now, you get a lot of the marshmallow, you get a lot of the vanilla the whole way through. At the very beginning, you get that really sweet flavor on your tongue on the upfront, on the finish, you get that nice sweetness too. The aftertaste mellows a little bit more into like a roasty barley kind of flavor, but also still very sweet, has a lot of vanilla, has a lot of marshmallow. In the middle, there's like this crest, this peak, where you hit this, this bourbon alcohol bitterness and it really separates the two, the two flavors. Yeah, once I hold it in my mouth and swish it around a little bit, that, that really nice vanilla marshmallow flavor kind of, it gives way to this real, like, faint but noticeable slice of bourbon, like, spice to it. The bourbon barrel characteristic comes through. There's a little bit of an oakiness that comes through, again, right on the crest, on the peak of the flavor. Right as soon as you think that it can't get any sweeter, it doesn't. It actually goes into that bourbon flavor. You get a little bit of that oak barrel characteristic you get a little bit of this spicy um alcohol bite on the on the middle of your tongue and then as it rolls back down the sweetness kind of picks up where it left off and it just ebbs down right it just kind of comes right back down and it finishes with that little bit of that roasty kind of flavor in there as well i would it's almost borderline it's like it's complex, but it's not complex at the same time. It's very sweet, has a lot of sweetness. If you are a sweet stout kind of person, if you're not, I should say, yeah, probably this wouldn't be for you. It has, it's, very, it's a lot sweeter than I would expect from a regular bourbon barrel aged imperial stout or regular bourbon barrel aged stout. It has a lot of sweetness there. You can see you know, on there, it says vanilla and marshmallow. So you kind of have to expect that it's gonna be a little bit sweeter. There is not a lot of nuance going on between the sweetness, like I said, you get that sweetness up front, you get that cutting kind of bite of the barrel of the alcohol, of the, the bitter alcohol bite, like a very slight one, and then it just picks off, picks up with the sweetness where it ended, right before that little bitter slice, and then it just finishes, but it's not, there's not a lot of other flavors going on. It's kind of like, it's like a one trick pony that has a second trick up its sleeve. You know what I'm saying? There's like, it has that first trick and then it has that second trick that you're not expecting because you just taste it and it's just so sweet off the bat. And then you get to that other part. It's that first trick again, but it's just slightly different with a little bit of that smoky characteristic in there. So very intriguing. I'm glad that I was finally able to try one of these, especially to review it because Drafting Table kicks out some amazing beers. If you love stouts, if you love IPAs, they do that, but they also do the, the lagering kind of thing too. So, you know, they have that going for them too. So they're kind of a, a jack of all trades brewery and that's why they were one of my mandatory Michigan breweries. So you can go watch that video too. But if you get a chance to try this, what I'm saying is all this is to try to tell you, don't miss out on trying Mean Vanilla Bean when you get a chance to do so. All right, friends, that's been the 2020 edition of Mean Mallow Bean from Drafting Table. Have you had any luck tracking this one down? Maybe you're a Mug Club member that has it year after year. If you are, do you have a favorite variant that you like better than all the rest or maybe even better than this one? Let me know in the comments down below while you're down there. If you like beer, you might want to subscribe and click that bell. I'm here talking about beer twice a week. Tuesdays and Thursdays, it's all for free for viewers just like you. And you might miss your newest favorite if you're not subscribed and getting those notifications. So until next time, I'm Sean from Draft Therapy. Thanks for stopping by. Remember, drink craft beer, support your local breweries wherever they are. These guys are obviously in Wixom, Michigan, so go check them out if you're in the area. And most importantly, don't forget to treat yourself to a little draft therapy. Thanks for watching, everybody. Come around next time for my next Cellar Dive video, and we'll see you then. Cheers. Cheers.